Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this video I want to give you one trick that I think can really help to start or boost your photography business. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris, France. And I'm making a challenge of 30 videos in 30 days. This is video number 6. And in this video I want to talk to you about one trick that has really worked well for me and for many of my French photographers to get started on their photography business or to boost the photography business. Now, I'm not sure you're gonna like this trick, but it does work. I know some of you, you know, don't wanna make money with photography, you're doing this as a hobby, as you know, I have many friends which are like banker, lawyer, doctor, they make decent money, and they just wanna have some fresh air, which is fine, but I know also there's a lot of you that wants to make this as a full-time activity, and for this, of course, you need to make money. All right, one of the things that is kind of easy once you have achieved a certain level of photography is real estate or hotel photography. I find it's easier to start in this area than even wedding or fashion, but we'll tackle that. And um, so I wanna give you two, three stories to explain why this trick I think could change your business life. Uh, story number one, I started in uh, 2002, April 2002 to be precise, to work for my brother who created a company where he was selling websites and he was selling also photographic shots of hotels. So the idea is we would send a professional photographer, he would reshoot the hotel and we'll do a website. And it was unbelievable the result that we had. We've had hotels that were making no money on the web, literally, or like five or 10,000 and with new and great photos and a great website went from like nothing to 20 to $100,000. A lot of hotels in Paris at this time, 4X or 5X their income from the web by having great photos. I mean, people traveling all over the world, you know, all they have is photos. So if your photo is not there, same thing for real estate. If, you know, if you're trying to sell a million dollar house and you don't have an amazing photo, you won't sell the house, uh, especially in today's market where everybody's starting to realizing this and, you know, and changing their game about their photography. Anyways, that was back in 2002, and uh, when I first started in a company, my brother was very generous and gave me many of his customers to take care of. So I didn't have to do any cold calls. I just had about 20, 30 hotels that he had signed up on small, like SEO, and I had to go back there and sell them photographic um, plans and web design. And it was rather easy because they knew my brother and they would trust me and you know, it was kind of an, e an easy sell. And I remember all my life in October, 2002, a very young guy came in a company and he was, uh, he really wanted to, uh, you know, to do well as a salesman. And he started doing some heavy, heavy cold callings, uh, you know, like really with the yellow pages and he got so much result, it was unbelievable. I remember in October, 2002, he got seven new customers meaning he sold like website and a full photographic, uh, you know, shots to seven different hotels, which we never heard of, which was huge for our company at the time. And I realized, oh, this cold calling in Yellow Pages could be something. So I started this game that I want to share with you. And this is how the game worked. Uh, I hate cold calls. I don't like to do it, but it, I, I realized it was super effective. So what it is, is I first, at this time, booking.com or Expedia.com didn't exist. So I took the yellow pages and took the 1,800 hotels of Paris and put them on a spreadsheet. And every Tuesday and every Thursday, I would spend two to four hours doing cold calls to you know, try to sell photography and web design. And why on Tuesday and Thursday? Because per my own observation, uh, they're not there on the weekends. Often they were not back on the Monday from the weekends. Wednesday is a big kids day in France and Friday they're already gone for the weekend. So Tuesday and Thursday was a place where I could get decision makers to be there most of the time. And because I hated doing cold calls and I wanted to go through as fast as possible, I had this game. I would take a sheet of paper and for every call I would make, I would make one dash, one, one line. And I would do this and I would not go to eat and I would not take a break and I would do nothing else until I had 40 lines on my paper. Now, it didn't matter whether I could speak to a decision maker, it didn't matter even the phone worked, I had to make 40 times taking the phone and making the phone call. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen this movie from, with Will Smith called The Pursuit of Happiness when he's trying to sell stocks and he's like, he has this technique where he has this 
uh, pen and he doesn't take the time to put the phone back and take it back. He just does like this and makes a phone call. And this way he could make a few more calls than the other guys and became a millionaire. Uh, cold calling is the heart root of many businesses. Anyways, I hate to do it. I really hated to do it, but I did it. And um, so this is how it goes. Usually, statistically speaking, 40 phone calls gave me 13 decision makers, so whether it's the owner, the manager, or somebody in marketing on the phone. And out of the 13, I would get about two to three appointments. And out of these two to three appointments, I would make one sale. So one session of, I would say, uh, you know, two to four hours of 40 calls gave me one customer. So if I do that every twice a week, I would get two customers per week, eight per month. Eight per month were super viable. I could make a great living out of it. And of course, I didn't do it every Tuesday and Thursday, but I started doing it and I did it. I think honestly, over the first year, I did it maybe like just three, four times. And then I got so much business that I kind of forgot to do it. And then the business went you know, down a bit and I had to redo it here and there. But maybe for the first year, I did it like 10 times, 10 times four hours. And that gave me enough contacts to start my whole business. And I just, the rest was word of mouth and I never had to do it again. So that was my first story. Back in 2010, so way after I'm starting my photographing business, um, I have a friend which was one of the photographers that we hired that I trained on digital because by then I was good into photography, and, but I kept hiring photographers. And he was not working for us for different reasons because we took, took on salary people and he was an independent, so he was on his own. And he asked me, he says, can you do me a favor, Serge? Can you guarantee your name on my rent? so that you know, if I don't pay, you would pay for me, but this way I can get my apartment. I said, you know, I trusted the guy, I said, no problem, I'll sign for you, and I signed the rent for him. Eight months later, I get a, a letter from the landlord telling me that he's not paying the rent and I have to pay for it. I'm like, what's going on? So I call up this photographer, I said, what's going on? You know, you're not paying your rent. And he says, yeah, but you know, the business is tough, there is such a big comp uh, competition, uh, you know, they don't want to invest. This is like two years after 2008. It's the crisis. You know, uh, money is low. They don't want to invest. No, blah, blah. Excuses, excuses. Like, I just can't do it. Then I explain him what I just explained to you about the 40 phone calls. And he says, all right, I'll give it a try. I said, just do it. You know, get your photography business going. And um, he calls me three days after. And he says, you know, I didn't like the cold calls. What I did is I took my photos, I think he had an iPhone or an iPad or a computer or something at the time. And he actually walked to the hotels and showed his photography to the hotels. And, um, and he got a lot of business out of it. So much. This was seven years ago that he did it maybe three or four times and it gave him business for years. He didn't have to do it 10 times because he actually went to the hotels. And so, and now he's been making a steady income from photography and ne I never heard about his rent anymore, you know, again. So the thing is, often when we start business, we are always hoping for an agency, for a salesman that's going to do our selling for us. Well, in most, in many of the cases, you're going to have to do it at first. And the thing, it's like, you know, it's like pushing a train or like a big car. You know, you're trying to push it down the road or on the road. At first, it's really hard. But as you get it pushed, it's going to go faster and faster and faster. You won't have to do cold calls or go into hotels all your life. And if you live in an area where you don't have much hotels, you can always do real estate. Real estate is everywhere. You know, same idea. You walk into an agency or you call an agency, you know, hey, you know, here I am. This is what I do. You know, I master Lightroom. I master Photoshop. I'm at the top of the knowledge of digital photography. You know, this is my work. You know, let me shoot an apartment for free. If you like it, you know, then you can hire me for the rest, you know. And that's what I did sometime. I even shot free rooms or free apartments for real estate. Real estate also is very big. The other day, I went onto a website, which is sologier.com. It's the one website where you find all the apartments for sales in Paris. And I went to the first district, one of the most upscale districts. I took million dollar apartments. Some of them were iPhone photos. I could not believe it. How can you dare try to sell a million dollar apartment with iPhone photos? The thing is, some real estate agent did not understand yet the purpose of the value of a photo. I'll tell you a story. Uh, I had a friend who was trying to, for 14 months to sell his apartment. He had great photos. I went in there and did some HDR. Beautiful. In 24 hours, the apartment was sold. The value of a photographer in real estate and, tr and, and travel hotels is huge. You know, you're not just bringing good photos. You are 
boosting their business. And that's what you got to sell. You're not saying, oh, I'm going to do good photos. I'm saying, I'm going to do photos that's going to sell your business. I'm going to do photos that's going to get you a hotel reservation or which enables you to sell more expensive your rooms. That's what they want to hear. And so that's the trick. The trick is, you know, you're going to have to do some cold calls. You're going to have to walk into places and, you know, you have to force yourself somewhere with the game because I don't know many artists that loves to do that. And I'm one, one of them. Yes, I've been a salesman a lot of my life, but I don't like cold calls and I don't, know, I don't like to be rejected. And I don't like to walk in places that people don't know me, but it's so much worse the effort. Now, another trick, let's say you don't want to get into uh, real estate, you don't want to get into uh, all that things, you want to get into fashion photography, or you just want your, your work uh, to be published. Years ago, I, I, I watched an interview of Joel Grimes, one of my favorite photographers, and he gave a trick which I thought was so brilliant, I'm going to give it to you now, but it's his trick, and I, I, and I tried it. So the trick was this, he would come into a town and would buy all the magazines that he wanted to work with, sports magazines, uh, design fashion. He would find the editor-in-chief and if I remember well the idea was this. He would, so let's say you had 20 magazines, he would print five photos of his own, five photos that he really liked uh, and every Monday he would send one photo to each of the 20 magazines. So you're talking printing a hundred photos, five different photos, each one 20 and every Monday he would send a written note like I would love to work with you, this is what I do, my name is Joel Grime, here's my number and he would do that to all the magazines. And he said that after about a month you know, of doing that, like a lot of, half of the editor contacted him and booked him for some job because like they, they, are, they are not used to get printed stuff. You know, every, everything is by mail by now. And, um, and voila, so I got really inspired. I don't wanna work in fashion, it's not my thing, but I do landscape. So when I heard that story, I went into the, the, the closest bookstore, I bought all the landscape, I mean all the photographic magazine, just photographic magazine that they were. There's only five in France, I bought all five of them. I wrote a very nice letter, I printed my photos, and I did only one set. I, so I gave like 10 photos that I printed with a nice letter, and I added a CD with a high res file in, with it, and, and in the letter I gave them an authorization to publish. I explained who I am, what I do, and I gave them the authorization to publish. I sent it to the five magazines. Took me about, the whole thing took me four hours. Out of the five magazines, three published me. One did like an eight or 10 page article on me. You can see some of the scans here. Funny story, it was like, in all it was 20 pages. This original uh, press is what got me my, my uh, first O1 visa uh, to, be a, to be a photographer in the United States because I had this 20 page of article. It only took me one afternoon after watching Joel Grimes telling this story. So you, that's something else you could try. If you, let's say you're a doctor, and, but you really like your photo, you don't wanna make money with it, but you just you know, like to get published, go buy all the local magazines, do some nice prints, you know, send it to him with a CD, or, or you, it could be like a, a, you know, a link from the web with Bitly, uh, so that it's not a too long link, you know, a shortened link, easy to type, and send that with a nice letter saying, you know, here's my work, you know, love your magazine, would love to be published, here is an authorization. You see, journalists are desperate to get content. They, they, they need content. So if you give them content where they have the, the high res file, they have your written authorization, you know, it's bread and butter for them. They're just going to put it out there unless your stuff, is, is, they don't like it, you know. But if your stuff is good, and a lot of you guys I know have great photos. So well, that's really my sort of one tip. You know, I think that uh, getting out there, your income is going to be proportional to the attention you attract. So you got to attract a lot of attention. All right, if you like this type of videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video if you liked it and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me your experience about business. You know, share your own successful actions with the rest of the world of what worked for you to get your photographic business going. I'm really curious to hear your viewpoint. Okay, two last things before we go. Uh, in case you have not seen that yet, I, there's a huge favor I want to ask. I have this movie out where I'm the lead actor called The Hollywoodans. It's a, a comedy about Hollywood and about reaching your dreams. It's on pre-sale in 77 different countries, exclusively on the iTunes store. And I need a lot of pre-sales to get any attention from the industry. And we are a bit behind. So if you can take five minutes to just pre-sale the movie, your credit card will only get debited the 16th of May, the day of the release of the movie. And this way I can make a lot of sales that day because I've got a lot of pre-sales and then I can chart iTunes and maybe, you know, 
get recognized and be able to do a second movie. That would really mean the world to me. In exchange, I will do as much free tutorials as I can for you, but if you can do that for me, that would be amazing. Also, I just came out with my biggest Photoshop course ever, Photoshop for Photographer. A lot of people have been asking me, yeah, but I bought your old Photoshop Photographer. Is it worth buying a new one? The answer is yes. This one is twice the size. There's a lot more videos, a lot more smaller videos, 21 new projects, uh, a lot of new things. So even if you have my old one, you know, I'm discounting it a lot right now to get as much sales as possible. Uh, you know, take advantage of it as, you know, if you want to learn Photoshop. But if you want to learn Photoshop, this is my best course yet. Thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow.